so in this video I'm gonna show you guys how to completely refurbish your original Xbox um, basically well this one works this this Xbox works but it has uh, the CD drive gets stuck um, and it needs a new uh, clock capacitor and I'm gonna probably replace other capacitors and I am going to replace the thermal paste on the GPU and CPU and I'm going to completely clean it up that's basically it uh, when it comes to refurbishing these uh, just replacing the caps the clock capacitor thermal paste new thermal paste put a new band on the DVD drive and clean it up a bit and uh, I usually put a bit of new grease on the gears of the of, of, this, of the DVD drive and uh, I also clean the, the, the lens on the DVD drive and that's well, let's get started. If you guys are um, on the market to get one of these, and and you guys want to do your own, you know, refurbish this yourself, I recommend getting one that has not been opened, like this one. So I have found out that a lot of the time, if they're open. Somebody already messed with it, so if um, this label here is ripped already, this is where two screws go, two bolts. If the if the label here have been messed with already, somebody already opened it and probably I don't know, probably damaged it even more, or probably put the wrong CD drive or hard drive back in there. Um, so somebody already messed with it, most likely you're not going to be able to repair it um, that easily. So that being said, um, another issue uh, that you might run into is uh, some of the traces on the PCB might prevent you from turning on the Xbox. So let's say you hook this thing up but it does not power on, maybe those traces are bad and that's why you cannot power on your Xbox. The, the traces that go to the uh, power button. I have also come across some that the traces are fine but still did not turn on. It could be a power supply issue or it can actually be the switch. I mean, I'm sorry, not the switch, the button here in the front. So, I have had a couple that this, the button, the circuit here goes bad. So I would recommend getting a new new button, power button and reset button. Those are like six dollars. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's get started with your second knife. I'm gonna cut here. So for this one, you only need um, two Torx bits. You need a T10 and a T20. So you only need two. So for these these bolts here, you need the T20. And I use my electric drill here to remove them. Just lift this part up and should come off pretty easily. So next we're gonna use a T10 bit to remove this guy here. Let's remove the ribbon cable here. 
and then remove the power cable here. For the hard drive. Set this aside for now. There's two more uh, T10 screws here. The CD drive on this one gets stuck. If I hit it a couple times, it does eject. So let's remove the DVD drive here. Just lift it up. Remove the ribbon cable. And then the power cable here. Set this aside for now. So for the most part, all the caps look pretty good. Even the, um, the clock capacitor here. So this one right here. Looks pretty good. Um, but I'm still going to replace this one and these three right here. They usually tend to bulge up. And um, that's pretty much it on the capacitors that I'm gonna replace. I'm gonna clean everything up and remove these in a bit. But first, I'm gonna fix the CD drive, the DVD drive. So, I'm gonna wear some gloves. This gets pretty dirty. Um, I use these alcohol wipes to clean the whole console. And they work pretty good. Give it a nice wipe down, remove all that dust that's been collecting for years. And you're gonna need some Q-tip and some alcohol. If you can get 99% alcohol, go with 99%, but I'm using the 91%. Uh, Press down in there and the CD drive should eject forward. What I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to clean here. I'm gonna add new um new grease on there. I'm going to replace this drive belt here and I got some new ones here. Here's a new one. Here's the old one. So that, as you can see, it's pretty stretched out. So here's a new one. Pretty easy to install. Um, you're gonna need some tweezers. It makes makes the job easier.
So a new Q-tip. I am going to claim the uh, the lens here. So I use this guy, some white lithium grease, and I'll just spray it on here. And just be careful not to get it on here. So. So very lightly. Put a little bit there. And clean the, the mess here. And I spray a little bit in here. There's a gear in here, I don't know if you can see it. So I spray a little bit in there. And that's pretty much it. Um, should work pretty good now. definitely test it out now and I'll just move this guy back forward I don't know if you can see the this white piece right here just move it all the way forward So when you want to eject it, you just push in, and when you're done, just put it back where how it was. So now let's put it back together, and it should be working pretty good now. Now, press the eject button, see if it works. Alright, it's working. I already tested this one, uh, so the it does read games. So even though some of these you can fix the eject issue, sometimes it will still won't read the games. There might be something else wrong with the drive, like uh, probably the, the the lens is bad or something. But in this case, since I already tested it, the only issue with it was fixing the eject issue, and everything's good to go now. So next thing is to work on this. So I'm gonna move this cable here and do a quick clean. And not the whole wipe. I'm going to remove this guy too. And I am going to remove these.
Now using your, your T10, you're gonna remove all these screws here. So I'm going to remove these with this guy here and um, using a flathead just pull this back to come off pretty easily. here on the edge they tend to uh, go open and that's why sometimes your Xbox won't turn on I mean just inspect them make sure they don't look bad all these traces here there's four of them so I would inspect all these traces here four bottom ones make sure they look okay if you don't see any anything that looks burnt Everything looks pretty good. You can also follow these traces all the way up here. And um, there's some uh, two resistors here, I believe, and two uh, through hole connections here that you could scrape off with your sacno knife here. And then you can measure from here and follow the trace all the way up here. And um, just uh, make sure this continuity and um, if there isn't then you're gonna have to add a jumper from here to here and um, because this one's working I'm not gonna go into it but uh, on the next one if I do another one because I have a couple of Xboxes that I'm working on uh, with different issues um, I'll go into more detail but for now, let's just move forward, keep cleaning this, and um, so let's just quickly try to refurbish this Xbox, uh, try not to waste too much time, it does take at least an hour or two to do one, here, orange water, thank you, thank you, thank you, You really want to get in there, do your full 
Ini sedikit lah ya, harus masuk ke sana Cuma untuk all Kali ini kita lepas out Oke, no, ini no Jadi ya, lemang We have a, a, a duster, a can of air. You can dust this guy pretty easily, but that's pretty good for me. So depending on the uh, year of the Xbox, they're gonna look a little bit different. Um, some of them have the the clock capacitor in, in different locations. I, I think there's depending on the year, there's one here, maybe up here somewhere. But for this year, this is a 2003, so here's where the uh, clock capacitor is. I'm gonna replace this guy. These two right here. Just going to pull it. There it is. So it's hard to read it, but it's a 2.5 volt, one ferret capacitor. Um, and this is what they use to keep track of time on the Xbox. So unfortunately, the video where I recorded the uh, changing the capacitors got erased. But basically what I did is I replaced these three and the clock capacitor here. And um, the way that I did it is by just um, heating up the, the leads here and pulling them out and then cutting the new leads on the new capacitor short and just inserting them as I heat the, the two um, through hole connections. Uh, it's kind of hard to remove the solder from those through holes because uh, those layers are pretty thick. So I mean I can try to heat it up as, uh, and try to remove that solder but I do run the risk of damaging the, the through hole on the next video that I do on the next repair I'll make sure that that video doesn't get erased and I'll show you guys how I replace these if you still have issues but the next step is cleaning the removing the um, old solder paste from the GPU and the CPU here So those are ready for solder paste, but I am going to remove the solder paste from these guys first.
Am I gonna clean these? We just need some contact cleaner. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna clean the uh, the rest of the console. So it's pretty much ready. I just I'm just gonna clean everything. So there's two clips here that you just push out and you lift it up and the fan comes out. I have some cleaner degreaser. I'm gonna spray a little bit around. So I checked all the capacitors on the power supply and they all seem okay. None of them seem to be bulging. Um, the system turns on pretty good. Uh, so there doesn't seem to be any issues with the caps right now. Uh, if you wanted to, you probably want to replace these here. So before I put everything, all the screws back on, I'm going to power it on to make sure that it works.
So I'm gonna test it, make sure everything's working. So I had already turned it on before I started recording and I already set the time. Um, I unplugged it and I let it sit for like an hour and I plugged it back in and the, the time saved so the clock capacitor should be, was installed correctly. Um, put the game in here, make sure it runs. Tony Hawk in here. Everything seems to be working pretty good, so I'm going to put it back together now.
So it turns on. So let's put the uh, rubber feet back on. And you're gonna need a little bit of super glue for that. And I usually let it sit flat somewhere. Um, just let it sit on a flat surface for a couple minutes so that these, uh, the super glue basically glues these nice and flat. So that's basically it. Um, if you like these videos, um, please remember to like and subscribe. I will try to do more of these. Um, I have more Xboxes to repair. Um, this is a simple one. Uh, this is simple, a simple refurbish on a system that's pretty much working. Um, the only issue with this one was the CD drive was getting stuck. Um, but there's other ones that I have with other issues uh, with the CD drive or it not powering on. Um, yeah, check out uh, check out my YouTube in the future for um, for other videos on these.